why I started working out. Man, it was the girls, man. It was women. Straight up, it was women. No, no, no if, ands, buts about it, man. It was crazy because, quick story, it was me and my boy, Dre. Shout out to Dre. Um, we was at the club. We had all the girls, and they wasn't even doing nothing. You know, it's, uh, it's cool when your boy makes it big and uh, gives you a shout out. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, let's dive deep. Let's 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 talk how the uh, how the average the average Joes can maximize their looks. Let's go. Now, balancing your facial third proportions can be a great way of maximizing your looks, your facial features, and usually this is done in the manner of how you style your hair. Uh, let's take a look at a few examples here of how this plays out. Right here, we got Killian Murphy. As you can see here, Killian usually styles his hair slightly in front of his face, and why? Because Killian has a slightly high set hairline, which in return makes his forehead or upper third a bit on the larger side. So to counterattack this and kind of even things out, the hair resting on the forehead uh, kind of creates that illusion as if you have more proportionate thirds. And this is the exact reason why I style my hair the way I do because uh, I got that big white guy forehead. <laughs> and now on the other side of the spectrum, if you have a very small upper third, say like Zayn for instance, your best bet is to open things up by styling your hair upwards or even back. And uh, all this applies to the lower third as well. If you got a more smaller, weaker jawline, maybe grow out your beard just a bit. Uh, you got a bigger, stronger jawline, maybe trim the beard. Don't let it grow too long and too heavy. And by the way, these aren't rules or guidelines. These are just starting points for those of you who wish to maximize your looks. There's been many times where I've seen dudes just totally ignore these principles and they still look great. Number two, darker shades. Now, a recent study uh, was done asking a thousand people which color outfit that they found most sexy on the first date and black, it says, was easily atop of that list. When asked why, black was said to portray confidence, intelligence, and a sexier overall image. However, deeper research suggested that it wasn't necessarily the black that portrayed these things, but more so outfits that were simply just darker. Basically meaning any color really, just as long as it was toned down into that deeper, darker shade. So the next time you're getting date night ready, try going for darker browns, chocolate browns, charcoal, and you know those deep dark grays, uh, navy blues even. Anything that just gives off that dark, uh, sleek, edgy sex appeal. Now when it comes to skincare, the main goal should always be as less friction as possible, especially if you're prone to acne. This is because friction leads to irritation and irritation always leads to acne, we know this. With that said, sticking to a single blade razor is gonna be your best bet. By using a single blade, this is gonna reduce the friction immensely, opposed to using a razor that has four or five or even six blades, that's just gonna jack you up. It's funny, for years I was using these overly priced blades and razors and only using the back ends of them. You know where that little single blade is at. So once Manscaped came along with their Plow 2.0 safety razor, uh, this was just what I needed. Now, Manscaped is today's sponsor, and today we're gonna be taking 20% off of your order, plus giving you free shipping. Just click that link down below. As most of you know, I'm a huge advocate of their Lawnmower 4.0 that's engineered specifically for below the waist grooming. Now with their new 2.0 Plow Safety Razor, this double-edged razor produces a nice close shave for your face, neck, and beard. It has a perfectly weighted brass handle and zinc alloy head designed for a precise, even stroke. Just simply let the blade glide smoothly over the curves of your face. It's rust resistant and it also reduces razor burns and ingrown hairs. And a good rule of thumb, less strokes equals less skin irritation, remember that. By the way, feel free to opt in to the Plow 2.0 Blade Replenishment Plan as part of the Manscaped Peak Hygiene Plan. You'll save a lot of money this way and receive quarterly replenishment blades straight to your door. You can cancel anytime. Also, feel free to get yourself the traveling bag if you haven't yet. This allows you to store all your Manscaped products nicely and be able to travel with them. Again, be sure to get that 20% off plus free shipping down in the description below. Number four, choosing fragrances for your specific lifestyle. Now, the same way us men get all loopy when you know we get a whiff of that sweet sexy scent that our girl has on women love it just as much on us men but choosing the right fragrance for the right specific occasion or your specific lifestyle is key obviously for instance you don't want to wear something sporty or fruity if you plan on taking your girl out to somewhere romantic same as if you work in an office you're probably going to want to go for something more fresh woodsy, maybe a little spicy, or say if you're going to the gym, wear something nice and light. People don't wanna be around Mr. George Colony while they're working out. So be smart and choose your fragrances accordingly. Women will appreciate that. Number five, low shine products. Now, of course, there's a time and place for everything, and those slick backs or 
nice pompadours um, or anything really that has that high shine look to it can look great, of course. But all in all, most women, they don't prefer shiny or greasy or heavy looks. Out of all the surveys I've personally researched, I've always found that women mostly prefer men with more masculine, shorter haircuts styled with products that are either matte or low shine. However, uh, just keep in mind, when you're using matte products, they can sometimes make the hair look a little dried out, in my opinion. So I've always suggested using something that has a low or natural shine to it. Something along the lines of, say, Ocean Clay, for instance, which is my brand and what I use. It's a very high holding product that lasts all day long. We do have some discounts down in the description if you guys wanna check them out. All right, ooh, let's go ahead and uh, let's turn things up a bit here. Number six optimize. Now one thing a high quality woman is always going to look at is not necessarily your job or where you work at, but how well you do it. What's your status within that job? How do people see you? Even if say you work at a Wendy's or if you're a, a handyman, how are you perceived as a handyman? Are you the best damn handyman in the freaking city? When you leave a house that you just got through working on, do you leave the people better than how you found them? Did you give them an experience? Do they uh rave to their friends about you oh oh you know matt uh dude this this guy he's the best he's the best handyman he can fix anything you gotta hit up my boy matt oh joel you know this guy he just he he, he washes and details people's cars like nobody's business and on top of that he's just a cool guy right you you gotta use him you gotta call up my boy joel optimize how you do anything is how you do everything I think it was Denzel Washington, he said, um, whatever you do, whether it's flipping burgers, bricks, or houses, be the absolute best at whatever it is that you do. That's how you build status, my brothers. Number seven, talk less, listen more. You know, growing up, I was always so uh, uh, stressed of going out on dates. I was terrified of it, and I didn't go on many because I was always all worked up about, you know, what am I, what, what am I gonna say on this date? Um, what if, what if it gets silent and I have, you know, I don't, I don't have nothing to say or what if I'm not saying enough charming things? And I was just boggling my mind with all of these thoughts and just freaking myself out. But soon after, I realized just to keep things simple. Instead of making it all about me, shift the focus. You know, give that spotlight, put it on her. And, and you do this by just asking questions. Simple as that. You don't even need that many questions, honestly. You just need a few and you, you'd you be amazed by how many conversations and how much dialogue can, can come out of just these simple little questions that you ask. Listen, hey, girls, they, they love to talk. So uh, let them do what they love to do. Let them do what they do best and pass over that mic. And by doing this, your comedy, your humor, and your charm, this stuff will just exude steadily and naturally as it needs to nothing will be forced and remember not just with women but with people in general people aren't always going to remember what you said they're going to remember how you made them feel if you made them feel valued or not if you made them feel important and uh just like matthew mcconaughey said in his book green lights he said words are momentary intent is momentous number eight don't play no games now i can't tell you how many times i see all these youtube ads and instagram ads pop up of uh you know how to pick up chicks and or you know how to get laid or whatever and uh it's all mumbo jumbo it's all manipulation how can i get this girl to want me and like me and desire me how can i get her to uh, uh sleep with me hey hey just just text these three words and then don't respond for two days like bro what how about this how about not just, just just, stop being weird. How about that? How about stop manipulating everything and everybody and just be a man. Just uh, talk to her, tell her you wanna take her out. You see a girl that you think is cute out in public, grab those nuts, my brother, and just go talk to her and just feel her out. Ask if she would, uh, you know, enjoy going out for a cup of coffee with you or something simple like that. You know, when I first started talking to my wife, Bree, um, I didn't ask her out for the longest time. I was, I was playing games and, um, I was listening to this certain individual in my life. And, uh, at that time he, he just gave me terrible advice saying things like, Hey, don't even, don't even act like you like her. 
right? Don't, 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 don't respond to her texts, you know? Wait, wait another day or two, stuff like that. And because of that mistake, that, that cost me, man. I had to wait almost an entire year again to even be able to ask her out because she eventually got back with her ex. So only by, I mean, God's grace and bigger plan did it all work out for the good. Um, and and I was able to, you know, I had my shot again. And this time, the, the, the second time around, I wasn't about playing no games. I planned a date. I told her how much I liked her, how gorgeous I thought she was. And then I said, hey, let me take you out. And I went in and I executed. I wasn't about being Mr. Trickster guy anymore, nah. And uh, guess what? 10 months later, we were married. So, hey, look, sometimes you got to put aside and, and you got to ignore all these wonky tips that you're getting from all these, you know, influencers and all these men's influencer lifestyle YouTubers like myself. And uh, you just got to go in and you got to make your move. You got to be a man. Execute. A woman loves when a man just goes in and gets what he wants, gets crap done. And now for my last tip today, I wanna kinda lay some sort of foundation here uh, for my young books. Now, I remember when I was a little younger, uh, I wanted to be respected. I wanted to, I wanted to be seen as an adult, a man. I wanted women to see me that way as well, especially since uh, I always looked very young for my age. I mean, even now, I'm almost 30 years old, dude. And uh, I look like I just graduated from high school. Anyway, so what I'm trying to say here is I see a lot of young bucks these days who all just want to be the man, right? Especially at the gyms, you see it a lot. Um, you see all these high school guys uh, just acting a fool, acting obnoxious, straight uh, peacocking, you know, thinking they're more than what they actually are. And hey, look, no shade. I mean, there was a time where I used to think and act the same way as well. We all go through it. However, you gotta know your place. And um, growing up, my dad, he always made sure that um, I knew my place and that I was aware. And time, there would be times as well where he would have to reel me back in. And sometimes life would have to reel me back in. There was times in my life where I had to be completely humbled. With that said, you know, these days I see I see a lot of young men who want to be a man, who want to be the man, yet they're at home disobeying their parents, disrespecting them, out running amok, being rebellious, thinking it's cool to uh, disrespect their elders. And you know, this is crazy. I just had this revelation the other day um, and I wrote this down. I think this is the, uh, this is actually the first commandment in the Bible that has an actual promise attached to it, like a guarantee. Right? And it says, um, honor and obey your parents in everything. For this pleases the Lord your God and your days will be long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. And check this out, let's go even a step further. It also says in end times, uh, possibly the times we're in now, it seems, this very second. It says, for men shall be lovers of self, which we continuously see all the time these days, right? Uh, it says, people will be covetous basically meaning jealous. And how often do we see that? People scrolling through Instagram and just uh, uh, looking at all these pictures and, and wanting what that person has and uh, never being content with just what we currently have. It says there will be boasters, people who are proud and arrogant. We see that all day. Blasphemers and disobedient to their parents. It's crazy. All these things we are seeing more than ever right now. And this stuff was written over 2,000 years ago in the scriptures. We're seeing it all come to fruition. And so circling back to the main topic of this video and just tying up these loose ends here, you want to show yourself worthy of a high quality woman? You want to have a, a gorgeous, beautiful wife who, who sees you as the man? Well, hey, you know, the first thing she's going to be looking at is how well you handle your other relationships, how you treat your parents, how well you honor your family. That's gonna be the stuff. Those are gonna be the indicators for her. See, being a man who's truly sexy and that uh, is masculine and hard and, and, and has that king-like swagger, that stuff, it starts from home first. Look, a lot of you who are watching here on this channel, a lot of you are, you know, we got some youngsters in the house and um, a lot of you don't have your own family yet, right? And so the truth test starts now. The truth test starts with are you a good son? Are you a good brother, a friend? That's how you prepare yourself. That's how you start the journey of being a man. Hey, look, you take care of business now by being a dope son, 
a dope brother, a dope friend, hey, God's going to bless you greatly for it. Remember, it's promised. God's going to take care of you. He's going to make sure you got everything you need. I mean, hey, take a look at me, for instance. I grew up trying my best to honor my parents in every way possible, as best as I could. And uh, God's absolutely done amazing wonders in my life. Um, I'm, my cup constantly overflows. He blessed me with the most dopest girl I could ever possibly imagine for myself. And you know what? On top of that, she treats me like a king. She submits to me. Why? Because I take care of business. I always have. So, I appreciate you guys watching. Hope you got a little something from this. And um, if you dug this video, please give it a nice big thumbs up. Subscribe if you are new. Hit that notifications button to be informed when I drop new content. And I'll see you very soon. Peace always.